Hi everyone, I'm Dan Joseph, and this is the Week in Liberalism for the week of Monday, May 9th, 2016. Monday. On Monday, on PBS's Charlie Rose Show, a group of Obama's speechwriters all had a good laugh. Lovett wrote the line about, um, if you like your insurance, you can keep it. How dare you. Huge impact, and you know what? <laughs> Lying is funny. Now, PBS is government funded, so Charlie Rose's show may actually be part of Obamacare. So, if you've lost your health insurance because of Obamacare, just turn on Charlie Rose's show because laughter is the best medicine. Sure, you're gonna die, but at least you'll get this really cool tote bag. Here's a good one. Charlie Rose isn't a media shill for the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> you're cured. For some reason, the fact that Obama administration officials were caught laughing about lying to the American public didn't trend on Facebook. I wonder why. Tuesday. On Tuesday, Jessica Robinson, a writer for Vanity Fair, expressed her disappointment in the new Marvel film Captain America Civil War. She was apparently upset because the movie wasn't gay enough. Writing about a touching moment between two of the movie's protagonists, Robinson wrote, It's a sweet human bonding moment but one that also bristles with heterosexual virility. If Disney isn't inclined to give audiences a gay superhero, couldn't they have at least left us the dream of Bucky and Cap? Where's the room for interpretation in that moment? Following the article, Marvel announced that the next Captain America movie will feature the hero standing in front of a transgendered bathroom with a rainbow shield protecting the rights of middle-aged men to pee next to little girls. Seriously though, we could totally solve this problem simply by changing the names and costumes of the characters without sacrificing the superpowers that made them famous. For example, The Flash would now simply be known as Speedo. Oh my. I mean, come on, gay people. You have a bunch of guys running around in skin-tight latex outfits and tights. Isn't that enough? Of course, if we're going to make the heroes gay, the villains are going to have to be gay, too. This week, Iron Man does battle with the nefarious menace, Dr. Sparkles, who is threatening to cover a major American city in glitter. That's pretty evil. Have you ever tried to get glitter off of you? That crazy guy needs to be locked up in Arkham Asylum forever. Batman and Robin, get on that. Wednesday. We woke up on Wednesday morning to discover that Bernie Sanders absolutely trounced Hillary Clinton in the West Virginia Democratic primary. I can't imagine why. Because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. Oh yeah, that. So far, the lack of popularity of the 2016 candidates has been great for one guy. Since the primary started, President Obama has seen his approval rating go above 50% for the first time in four years. His autobiography is going to be pretty short. For the first four years of my presidency, I wasn't this guy. After that, my greatest success was not being any of these guys. I am really good at not being other people. Oh, and also I screwed up the entire American healthcare system. My wife had a vegetable garden. You didn't build that. The end. Thursday. On Thursday, 60 Minutes reporter Morley Safer announced his retirement after 50 years at CBS. Safer, who once eulogized Ronald Reagan by saying, I don't think history has any reason to be kind to him, said that he wants to spend his retirement years doing what he loves, scaring the living bejesus out of small children. Friday. The people of the socialist nation of Venezuela are now so destitute that they are reportedly reduced to eating stray dogs due to lack of food. Upon hearing the news, President Obama officially announced his candidacy to become president of Venezuela. I'm Dan Joseph with MRC-TV, and that was the Week in Liberalism for the week of Monday, May 9th, 2016. See you next time.